Hello everyone, my name is Anna Lacroix and I represent the Polish energy group Tauron. I will present the lecture titled The Next Generation EU as a Business Opportunity in Poland. I will start with the introduction and then I will tell you about the Polish Recovery and Resilience Plan. And finally, I will tell you a few words about other sources of financing investments in uh, the energy sector in Poland. On the 21st of July 2020, the European Council agreed to a EU recovery fund of 750 billion euros, branded the next generation EU in order to support member states hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. The next generation EU found goes over the years 2021 and 2023 and will be tied to the regular 2021 and 2027 EU's multi-annual financial framework. The comprehensive packages of the next generation EU and the multi-annual financial framework together will reach the size of 1,824.3 billion euros. The instrument would be the new one, the next generation EU, would be financed from the funds borrowed on the markets by the European Commission on behalf of the EU member states. On the 11th of February 2021, the Council adopted a regulation establishing the Recovery and Resilience Facility, which is the heart of the EU's recovery plan. It will make 672.5 billion in grants and loans available for public investments and reforms in the 27 member states to help them address the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, to foster the green and digital transitions, and to ensure that the member states' economies become more sustainable and resilient. Under the new regulation, Member States will need to set out in their National Recovery and Resilience Plan a coherent package of reforms and investment projects covering six policy areas of European relevance. They are the Green Transition, the Digital Transformation, Smart, Sustainable and Inclusive Growth and, and Jobs, Social and Territorial Cohesion, Health and Resilience, policies for the next generation, children and youth, including education and skills. Support will be linked to country-specific recommendations under the European semester, which identify central challenges for each member state to address, to strengthen the competitiveness and as well as social and economic cohesion. It will also contribute to the implementation of the European pillar of social rights. Some of the key requirements concern the EU's green and digital objectives. At least 37% uh, of each plan's allocation has to support the green transition and at least 20% the digital transformation. In addition, all measures included in member states' plans should respect the do no significant harm principle to protect the EU's environmental goals. For the plans in, approved in 2021, Member States will be able to get pre-financing of up to 13% of grants and loans provided for in their plan. The rest of the funds will be paid based on uh, the, the achievement of the agreed milestones and targets. Polish Recovery and Resilience Plan is a comprehensive program of strategic reforms and projects. 
Its aim is to rebuild the economy after the coronavirus pandemic crisis and provide it with greater resilience to future unforeseen circumstances. The money received under the program is intended for technological modernization to reach native companies and to improve the quality of life of Polish people and to competitiveness of Polish economy. And the reforms and investment programs of the Polish Recovery and Resilience Plan are primarily intended to achieve a green and digital transformation in the long term. It should be seen as one of the many tools available in the process of modernizing the economy. The creation of Polish Recovery and Resilience Plan is based on the European Recovery and Resilience Facility, which provides 750 billion euros in aid to member states. Poland is the fourth largest beneficiary of this scheme. Under the instrument for reconstruction and resilience, Poland will have around 58.1 billion euros at its disposal, including 23.9 billion euros in grants and 34.2 billion euros in loans. And we have to use this money until 2026. This appropriation must be used for specific investments that are part of key areas for the EU. These include infrastructure, transport, energy and the environment, innovation, digitalization, health, society and territorial cohesion. On the 3rd May of 2021, the Polish plan was officially sent to the European Commission, but until now it is not accepted yet. Poland wants to allocate the resources of the instrument for recovery and resilience to pro-development investments. In practice, this means support for the five following areas. A resilience and competitiveness of the economy, green energy and energy efficiency reduction, digital transformation, efficiency, availability and quality of the health system, and green smart mobility. Here are some of the types of investments supported by the Polish Recovery and Resilience Plan. Investments for enterprises, micro and SMEs in products, services and competences of employees and staff related to the diversification of activities uh, preparation of investment areas, investments in the environmental technologies and innovations, including related to the circular economy, investments in heat cold sources in heating systems, replacing heat sources in, and improving energy efficiency in residential buildings, replacing heat sources and improving the energy efficiency in schools, uh, investments in hydrogen technologies, storage and hydrogen transport, development of transmission networks, intelligent infrastructure of electricity, RES installations implemented by energy communities. Construction of offshore wind farms, energy storage, investments in wastewater treatment systems and water supply for rural areas, investments for comprehensive green transformation of cities, providing access to very fast internet in wide areas, investments in the production of electric cars, investments in intermodal transport, development and modernization of infrastructure of care centers, highly specialized and other medical entities, development and modernization of infrastructure of Powiat hospitals. I would like to say a few more words about other sources of financing investments in the energy sector in Poland. 
under the multiannual financial framework and the cohesion policy, Poland will receive in total 72.2 billion euros. For policy objective 2, greener Europe, it will receive around 20.5 billion euros. This objective will be pursued through operational programs at national and regional level. According to the draft of the partnership agreement, which sets out the framework for implementation of cohesion policy in Poland, Objective 2 will focus on the following investments. Construction modernization of district heating and cooling systems, heat storage, investments in systemic sources including high efficiency cogenation and regeneration units, RES installations and energy storage, intelligent transmission and distribution networks, charging and refueling infrastructure for zero and low emission vehicles. Another fund that will support energy transition will be just transition fund. It is aimed at mitigating the social economic impact of energy transformation. Among the investments supported by this fund there are inter alia investments in deployment of technologies and infrastructures providing affordable clean energy, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, energy efficiency, renewable energy. The Just Transition Fund will be implemented in Poland as a separate national operation program with an allocation to three regions that depends on coal and lake mine, including Silesia, Lower Silesia and Małopolska. The scope of regional support will result from the territorial plans prepared for Just Transition Fund. Support for the energy transition in line with the European Green Deal also comes from the fourth reform of the EU ETS system. In accordance with the revised EU ETS Directive in March 2018, two new funds were created, the Modernization Fund and the Innovation Fund for the period 2021-2030. The Modernization Fund will support investments to transform energy systems and improve energy efficiency in countries where in 2013 GDP per capita in Euro at market prices was below 60% of the EU average. The group of these 10 countries includes Poland. The fund may not support solid fossil fuel generation sources with the exception of uh, district heating in Romania and Bulgaria. At least 70% of the funds are to be invested in generation and use of electricity from renewable sources, improving energy efficiency, energy storage, modernization of energy networks, including district heating networks, electricity transmission networks, increasing interconnections between member states, social objectives, energy efficiency in the transport, construction, agriculture and waste sectors. The second new fund is the, the innovation fund, which can be used by all member states. An innovation fund is provided for projects on highly innovative technologies contributing to a significant reduction in emissions, such as carbon capture and utilization, carbon capture and storage, innovative technologies in the field of renewable energy and energy storage. Thank you very much for your attention and goodbye.